So in this video what I want to do is look at the sphere fill light. In the last video I made I looked at the sphere dome light and in many respects this is very similar except for the fact the light sources are within the volume of the object, the container object. However, uh, I thought what would be interesting is if we used it in a scene, in a practical sense, rather than just going over the controls again, because as I say, they're very similar. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this model, which is by Jack Tomlin, and I'm going to bring it from DAS Studio. So, without anything selected, this icon here on the crate shelf will let us launch DAS Studio and hopefully fetch something back from it. So, I'll just get rid of that and get rid of the figure and uh, I've navigated to where this has been installed and there's a preload that brings it all in so that's loaded it all in I just need to select it now and go to file and then send to Bryce and cross my fingers and hope it doesn't crash as it does occasionally so once that's out of the way switch to Bryce you can see that's loaded the model in and we're ready to go so it's slightly buried in the ground but that doesn't matter because I don't really need the infinite plane for this and um, what I intend to do is sort of get my camera in here and pointing up, maybe back a bit, and sort of get a shot of the sky. So this is called the moon gate, so I'm going to get the moon in. I uh, can see the end of the wall here, so to avoid that I'm going to modify the document setup so it's one to one, so I've got a bit of a square aspect ratio, and then move my camera in a little bit closer to give a bit of more of a dramatic view. Maybe not that close. OK, back a bit, and then narrow the field of view slightly. I'm just trying to avoid seeing the end of the wall when I do my render. So get it nicely framed. OK, that looks OK. And I want the moon up there somewhere. So if I go to sky and fog, I can position the moon in, in the sky here. Well, I could use rollerball and try and work out where it's going to be in the sky. Or hold, control and alt and double click on the roll wall. Ah, you can see it's there. It's appeared in the wireframe view. If you want to control where this appears exactly, Control and Alt and left click will move the sun to any set position. Control and Alt and Shift all held down together and left click will move the moon to that position. But you have to have engaged it first by holding Control and Alt and double clicking on the rollerball. So I've got my moon there and I'd like to see uh, the pattern on the moon. I'd like it to be larger than that. I'd like it to be stars in the sky and I want them to look like they're glowing. So I don't want much, do I? Right, so to set that up I need to go to Atmosphere off to start with and select a dark blue for the sky. Now that may seem like a strange choice considering you don't, I can't put any stars in when the atmosphere is off, but what I'm going to do is go into the Skylab, go into Image Based Lighting, use HDRI Image and then select Sky Dome only and use Sky and create a half dome of blue. I don't need any output from this and I don't need the quality to be set up because I'm not providing any output and I probably want the intensity only to be about 3 but I'm going to use this as a backdrop and add it to the sky which means any stars I have in the sky will appear to glow so we'll now check out of here and change it so we've got a darker sky and we can get some idea of what's going on in the sky now so there are clouds secluding our view of the sky so I'll hold the alt key down and click on the cloud icon there to switch that off and see if we can see any stars yet no so back into the Skylab now and we go Sun and Moon Celestial custom field stars we'll give it full intensity so just drag that up a full amount we'll put moon phase on give it a hundred earth shine and stick a moon texture on we'll go render in scene we might get an idea what's going off here now the, making the stars look like they're glowing in the sky or you go to atmosphere and take color perspective and I'm just going to set that right up so that's going to be a rather extreme setting as you can see but the key now is to reduce the density and the thickness let's see try and produce uh, something that's going to give us an interesting mix here so let's try uh, 20 maybe too little 25 okay and now what happens is that the haze will create some glow around the stars and then they'll, that glow will get added into the HDRI backdrop that's being added to the sky and that should help make things look like the glow. Possibly a bit too extremely at the moment. Let's have a look how things are looking. Okay, so rather extreme effect and I can't see the image on the moon here. So we'll go back to this now, back to our moon. Moon size, 
will make the disc rather larger and at this point we'll modify the haze color so let's make this a gr dark green Let's see if that brings things down a bit more under control so I've got this green haze so it's just maybe a bit of an extreme effect there but I thought it would be interesting and the the moon's really looking quite bright now if I hold control alt shift down I can in the wireframe view escape to move to wireframe control alt shift I can move it further down towards the horizon that'll make it a bit darker so we've fitted it in the scene just there so how, how much I want to bring this down um, well I don't know I've not decided quite on my composition I've got two circles so the, the fact that I've got quite a wide angled uh, lens means you get some distortion on the moon so I might uh, I might move it more to vertically central to try and mitigate that distortion but I'm, I'm not sure yet and uh, the other options I've got is to turn to custom sky uh, the sky color is not having any effect at the moment even if I'd made the sky bright red for example and you can see the moon's looking a bit dimmer now because of the choices that have been made there with the custom sky it changes the effect of the earth shine and things like that if I wanted that sky color to have an effect just going as an aside here uh, in the user backdrop we've got the use sky color option so that can also be added in but you can see it's flattened out the stars there so it's better if that doesn't have an effect in this case so that's better right so we're back in a position now and the moon's looking quite glowy for some reason probably because of changing the um, the sky color because this tends to flatten things out so when that's fully black so if, if this gets lighter the moon gets darker I know that seems strange but this is uh, because of the interaction between the skies so we can actually reduce the intensity of the moon by by just setting this down but giving it a bit of light so I'm just trying to find a, a balance that I think looks right for this scene not worry too much and because obviously I want to get on to using the fill light now so I've got my moon glowing I've got my stars glowing I've got my mysterious green mist well haze uh, I just want this area to have some detail now and for that we'll go to create shelf and create my uh, sphere fill light so I've created my fill light and just enlarge it to encompass the bit of the scene that I want it to light and bear in mind that it's going to create a volume of light sources so that it'll appear inside the volume of this sphere and if I use randomness it'd probably exceed the edges but I won't be doing that so I'll edit this light source now if I go to render in scene I can have an idea of what effect it's having as uh, in the video about the dome light if I use gradient with a fall off and then edit this so that it's darker on towards the, where the light source is and then gets lighter that will mean that the, you'll get no hot spots where the light is actually getting close to the geometry and then I can increase the intensity of this so it's lighting this area here uh, rather too much there I want the effect to be fairly subtle so I'll take it down a bit and then if I modify the color here so I make that red you don't see any effect it's because it's under the control of the gradient so I have to edit the gradient and then whatever color I want this to be so click on that little color button there uh, if I make it similar to the light from the moon mixed with the light from the haze that'll take it down to more appropriate color and then I can bring the intensity up just to exaggerate the effect and we can have a look at it here so the purpose of this light is to provide a bit of illumination inside of the gate to show off some of the nice details and also allow a light to the outer wall here so if I squash this a bit and then move it towards the camera it'll get more along the wall side and be less focused inside this arch it's, it's quite nice inside the arch but I just wanted a bit on the wall as well so just modifying that to get it on the outside here so we're getting a few details on the outside of the wall and on the ground and inside the arch now supposing uh, there was a too much light up here and we wanted it down at the bottom where these ivies are falling on the ground the solution to that well you could squash this shape of course but uh, we could also use the the bias option and this works as it does with the uh, with the dome we can go negative and it'll bias the light in a different direction so if we bias it right down to the bottom 
it might find that we get more light at the top, which seems a bit counterintuitive. But bear in mind, the light sources are darkest where they're close close to the surface, of, you know, close to the, where the light's emitting, and get lighter further away. So I put in the lights at the top. It's going to actually shine more light down at the bottom, or hopefully so. So that we just use the bias control and be aware that it's going to make a difference. We'll try and get a suitable setting. And if I can't do that, then I'll just squash the sphere down a bit. But uh, Oops, that's from the side. Let's get it from the front. You get the idea. In fact, that's what I'm going to do because it's a bit tall anyway. So zoom back a bit, squash it down. Should take a bit of the. Right, so I added more light for the same reason I was explaining before because of the the light source. So I might want to go back to my biasing control here and uh, just bias it more towards the top. That'll make it darker. In fact, by lifting it up, it'll make it darker. Ironically just because of the distribution of the light sources like so. So actually, it's not too bad. It's a little bit, maybe it maybe isn't too dark there, but you know, I want that detail to appear. So I'm just going to fiddle with that a little bit more. That's it. That's about the right level of light down there. It's not, not a realistic scene, clearly. I'm just trying to get an effect here. So then we've got the ivy spilling out and that's because of the volume of light inside the opening here. It's going to cast some interesting shadows around here and we're getting some detail from the haze getting added in. So the only ch other choice I want to make now is is this an appropriate haze colour or is it a bit too extreme? Well there's no reason why I shouldn't experiment with the haze colour. I can always go back if I don't like the results. So that's perhaps a little bit more natural colour but possibly less interesting. Let's try let's try red or, or let's see brownie colour? Oh no that's horrible. No, I don't like that at all. In fact, I did rather like the green for some reason. But uh, no, that's less a less extreme green. OK, then. So I'm going to call that it now. I could obviously experiment with this forever and a day. But you get the idea of what the fill likes contributing to this scene, because otherwise you just end up with a silhouette in this area. But in this case, it picks out this detail without providing any predominant light source. So. We've still got the moon and it casts its own light through here. Um, if I remember to turn the light on, actually. I better check that just before I know I've said, oh no, because I, when I created the HGRI image, it disabled the light source. I'm not actually getting any moonlight, so that's not uh, providing any shadow there. So the moon was going to have its own shadow here from falling through the gate, which will hopefully look quite good. So you can see we've got a strong shadow from the gate. So OK, well, I'll give this a final render now and call that the end of the video. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and that you'll have a go at experimenting with the sphere fill light in your own renders.